I was speaking with a woman who told me that she had a goal to meditate twice a day. And she believed that that was really important for her. But she found that she had a morning period where she meditated well. She got up early before work and it was really great for her. But then at the end of the day, she would try to meditate again and promptly fall asleep. So I asked her to tell me about her day and, and to see what was happening for her in a broader context. And she shared that, you know, she worked as a project manager in a nonprofit agency, work that she really enjoyed, but it didn't pay well. So in order to make ends meet, she had a second job of driving for a rideshare company a couple evenings a week and weekends. And she was also taking one class at a time to work through to get her graduate degree. And oh yeah, she was uh, sharing, a child, sharing custody of a child with her ex-husband. So she would have the child one week and he'd have the, the child the next week. And I listened to all of this and I thought, wow, that's a lot. So I asked her, why do you have this goal of meditating twice a day when it sounds like you have a really good morning practice going that works for you? She told me that she had been following a book series by a particular spiritual teacher. And in that he repeatedly said that unless you're meditating twice a day for 20 to 30 minutes at a time, you're not going to grow spiritually. And I thought, wow, that's a lot. So it was then that I introduced her to a basic dictum of spiritual practice that was articulated by Benedictine Abbot John Chapman about a hundred years ago, who said, pray as you can, not as you can't. Today, I want to talk about what it means to pray as you can and not as you can't. As I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. So in many people have this idea that their spiritual practice should be something or other, whatever that may be. And they get that idea from reading books by spiritual teachers or people who live in monasteries and, and it's often unrealistic for real life. People who live in monasteries, people who have grown to the point of becoming spiritual teachers, have been able to organize their life in a way that they have the privilege of being able to take lots of time. I'm one of those people. I have the privilege of being able to organize my life that way. And many people can't. Many people need to work two jobs to make ends meet. Many people are raising multiple children and have lots of commitments. I've talked with many people over the years who tell me that the only time they get alone and can be quiet is to lock themselves in the bathroom and maybe somebody won't bother them for 15 minutes or to sit in a parking lot in their parked car and just be there alone and that that's where they do their spiritual practice. It's important to recognize what you can do, what's realistic for your life. Not what some book says, not what some YouTube video says, but what is right for you. Pray as you can. Your pattern of prayer, your pattern of spiritual practice doesn't have to look like anybody else's. It has to be what's right for you. You know, I have a pretty hearty pattern for spiritual practice. I have my morning time that's 20 to 30 minutes. I have an afternoon period that's another 20 minutes. And I have time before bed, so it's three times a day. And that's a lot. Nobody else needs to do that. That's what works for me. But you know, there are times I get sidetracked. There are times when life interferes. That happened recently. In December, we went on vacation. And we went on vacation staying in a hotel in another city where we were visiting lots of longtime friends. So I'd have my period in the morning and, and that was fine. The afternoon we were out and about visiting people so I didn't have time to stop. And in the evening a lot of times I was just tired or maybe I had a couple drinks and so I was just falling right to sleep at night. So my pattern was off over that vacation period. Well it got more complicated because I got home and ended up having a bout of COVID. It wasn't a serious illness. It was a very mild form of COVID. 
but it was enough that I had trouble focusing. And so for three, another three weeks, if I would try to do spiritual practice, it felt like I was just staring at the wall and nothing was really happening. I was going through the motions. Well, of course, eventually I got better, I'm fine, and I was able to re-engage. It's important when that happens to you not to feel guilty about it. It's important when you're on vacation, when your pattern is interrupted, to be okay with that. Pray as you can, not as you can't, not based on some external expectation, but what's right for you in your context. Maybe you're not sure what it means for you to pray as you can. Working with a spiritual director can be really helpful with that. So if you want to talk about spiritual direction, reach out to me. We can do that. But what's most important is that you recognize to pray as you can, not as you can't, and don't feel guilt over what you can't do, but focus on what you can do for your own good, for your own growth, for your own benefit. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and leave me some comments. Have you found that it's important to pray as you can and not as you can't? Share that with me. Thanks and have a really great day.